Integral control allows us to achieve a zero steady state tracking error of constant reference inputs even if the plant does not behave exactly like the model. The plant behavior deviates from that of the plant model if, for example, the plant model is inaccurate or the plant experiences disturbances. In a previous video, we have looked at how to design integral control. In this video, we apply integral control to our familiar hanging pendulum model and look at its behavior. The plant for this example is our familiar frictionless pendulum with a length of 1 meter and a tip mass of 1 kilogram. The input is the applied torque U, the states are the pendulum angle and angular velocity, and the output is the horizontal displacement of the pendulum tip Y. The model linearized at an angle of 0 degrees is shown here in blue. We have previously used the linearized model to design a state variable compensator with integral control as shown here. The proportional state feedback gain Kp is given by this row vector and the integral gain Ki is given by this scalar. The three closed loop poles have been placed as shown here, with all of them at a distance of 4 radians per second from the origin of the S-plane. Let's now look at the structure of the compensator with integral control before we look at its behavior. For integral control, we add a state which we call Z. The derivative of this integral state is defined as the difference between the plant output and the reference input. With this definition of the integral state, the control law says that the plant input is calculated as minus the proportional gain vector times the plant states minus the integral gain times the integral state. Note that here we make the unrealistic assumption that the plant states are available for feedback. We will relax this assumption later in this video. Let's look at a diagram of the plant and compensator with integral control. We can see here that the difference between the plant output and the reference input forms the derivative of the integral state, which is put through an integrator to form the integral state z. This is then multiplied with the integral gain ki, which forms the one component of the plant input. The plant states are also multiplied with the proportional state gain vector which forms the other component of the plant input. The idea of integral control is that for the system to reach steady state, which means that the integral state does not change, the derivative of the integral state must be zero, which means that the difference between the plant output and reference input must be zero. Let's look at a simulation of our pendulum model with integral control. For this simulation, we use the linearized plant model the pendulum starts at an angle of zero and is given a reference step command of minus 45 degrees. The pendulum visualization is shown on the left. The top plot shows the plant input. The middle plot shows the output in blue and the reference input in red. And the bottom plot shows the pendulum angular velocity. We can see that the pendulum behaves as expected. The transient response shows a larger overshoot and longer settling time than our previous design with reference feed forward, which is due to our choice of poles. The difference between the plant output and reference input is zero in steady state, as expected from integral control. This simulation does not yet show the advantage of integral control, since the plant model used for the simulation is exactly the same as the one used for compensator design. For a more realistic simulation, we now use the nonlinear pendulum model. Let's first use the compensator with the reference feed forward that we have designed previously. There is a noticeable difference between the plant output and reference input in steady state. This is because the plant model used for compensator design is linearized at an angle of 0 degrees and it is significantly different from the nonlinear pendulum at minus 45 degrees. Let's now apply the compensator with integral control on the nonlinear pendulum model. This simulation shows the advantage of integral control. Even though the model used for compensator design is inaccurate, the steady state difference between the plant output and reference input is zero. 
At this point, we have still made the unrealistic assumption that the plant states are available for feedback. Let us now relax this assumption and add an observer. Since the plant states are not known, we need to add an observer to estimate the plant states. The usual observer equations define the observer, where we need to design the observer gain to place the observer poles in desired locations. With the observer, the definition of the integral state is unchanged, but in the control law we now use the estimated plant states for proportional state feedback. Note that the term with the integral state is unchanged in the control law. An important thing to realize here is that since the integral state z is known, we do not need to estimate it. We therefore only estimate the plant states. We have previously designed an observer for the plant with this observer gain. The two observer poles are both located at minus 20. The observer poles are five times faster in natural frequency than the closed loop poles, which is fast enough, so we reuse this observer design. Let's now look at a diagram of the compensator with observer before simulating the system. We have now added an observer, shown in orange, that takes the plant input and plant output and estimates the plant states. These estimated states, x hat, are now fed back through the proportional state feedback gain. The rest of the setup is unchanged. Let's now simulate the system with the observer added. For this simulation, we apply the compensator with integral control and observe it to the linearized plant model. The observer states are initialized to be different from the plant states so that we can see the effect of the added observer. The response of the system with integral control but without the observer is shown in light colors. The response of the system with an observer deviates initially from that of the system without an observer. The reason for this is that the estimated states initially differ from the plant states. Since these inaccurate state estimates are fed back to the plant input, they cause the plant to deviate from the reference input. The observer error disappears quickly, but the plant deviation takes longer to correct. However, after about 1.5 seconds, the response is almost indistinguishable from that of the system without an observer. The steady state error between the plant output and reference input is zero, which shows that the steady state error is not influenced by the addition of the observer. Let's now apply this compensator with integral control and observer to the nonlinear pendulum model. For this simulation, the observer states are initialized to be the same as the plant states. The response of the nonlinear plant with integral control but without an observer is shown in light colors. We can see that the response of the system with observer is initially quite close to that of the system without the observer, but after about 1.5 seconds, noticeable differences appear. The system with an observer displays a larger overshoot and takes much longer to settle. Nevertheless, the steady state error between the output and reference input is zero, as expected from integral control. Since the only difference between these systems is the addition of an observer, the difference in response must be caused by the observer. Let's think about what happens in the observer. When the plant is close to the linearization point, which is an angle of zero degrees for our example, the plant model used in the observer is accurate and the observer performs well. However, when the plant moves away from the linearization point, the plant model used in the observer is not accurate anymore and the observer does not behave as expected anymore. This in turn influences the plant behavior since the estimated states are fed back through the state feedback gain. One thing we can see from this example is that integral control forces the steady state error between the output and reference input to zero, even if the plant model is inaccurate. Another thing we can see from this example is that state variable control heavily depends on an accurate plant model, and the behavior can differ significantly from expected if the plant model is inaccurate. To end this video, I want to make a comment about the integral control structure we used in this video. Integral control can be slow to react to changes in the reference input. 
To see this, consider what happens when there is a step in the reference input. Before the plant can react on this step, the difference between the reference and output must be accumulated for a time period by the integrator before the integral state has a large enough value to influence the plant via the plant input. To address this disadvantage of integral control, one can combine reference feed forward with integral control. Reference feed forward then provides a fast, but possibly inaccurate, response to a change in reference input, and integral control adds a slower correction of the response.